people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. Hello viewers, I'm your host Uzma Jafri with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show. India's manufacturing industry is taking giant strides. India's IT services are dubbed the best in the world. The country is fast emerging as the most attractive investment destination on the planet. And her thriving and largest service sector is witnessing unprecedented pent-up demand. These are just a few aspects of the current state of the Indian economy, which is performing exceedingly well on almost every front. All surveys, analysis and projections from the IMFs to the World Banks to India's own estimations are assured of India's economic potential and performance. Join us today as we discuss how India continues to cruise forward unabated while others are struggling to meet even their basic targets. Apple Inc. CEO Tim Cook launched the first set of Apple retail stores in the Indian cities of Mumbai and New Delhi as the world's top tech brand set out to further establish its presence in the thriving and rapidly expanding Indian market. These are Apple's first retail locations in almost five years, since it opened its last full-fledged outlet in the Chinese capital, Beijing, in 2018. Apple's growing fascination with the Indian market is driven by both India's massive business potential and the growing economic capacity of her people. Today's India's economic strength and resilience can be attributed to her timely and corrective macroeconomic measures, prudent policy interventions, and her determined efforts at developing a conducive atmosphere for businesses. It is the result of these endeavors that India has been hailed as a bright spot by renowned organizations and individuals across the world. The International Monetary Fund, in its recent outlook, predicted an annual growth rate of 5.9% for India, while keeping the global growth estimates at just 2.9%. The IMF has predicted a high-flying Indian performance in an otherwise discouraging outlook. We have a, a growth rate for India, uh, which is 6.8 in 2022. Let's not forget, this is one of the bright spots in the global economy right now, such a high growth rate. And it is moderating down to 5.9 with a minus 0.2 uh, revision compared to January. In a law-abiding atmosphere, with transparency as a major component, almost every sector of the Indian economy is performing above par. India's Purchasing Managers Index, or PMI, an indicative marker of a country's economic performance in the manufacturing and service sectors, has risen to a three-month high. In March, India's manufacturing PMI was at 56.4, which was much better than even the favorable market forecast of 55. Output rose the fastest since December. India has set the target of augmenting her manufacturing market to $1 trillion USD in a few years. Experts are extremely optimistic regarding India's manufacturing sector and predict that manufacturing will be the country's growth engine in the fourth industrial revolution. Now, with the new policy of China plus one policy, India has become an attractive destination for manufacturing investment. Uh, of course, we have competing um, uh, countries like Vietnam and uh, Bangladesh and other Middle East countries, but uh, right now, the effort is to provide an attractive environment for manufacturing. And I think we're on track to do that. India's thriving information technology sector, her commitment to transitioning to non-fossil fuel energy with an increasing number of entities shifting their operations to renewable sources, and her futuristic policies regarding artificial intelligence 
are not just helping her own growth, but are also fostering global efforts towards achieving better living standards for people world over. Global offshoring and digitalization have also given India an edge over her market competitors. India, especially under Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government, has focused on revising India's labor laws. The reformatory labor codes of 2020, which ensured multi-layered security for the Indian workforce, have added to the country's growth. Now the effort is to bring in everything into the formal sector. So through digital, through infrastructure, through finance, whatever way, whatever manufacturing, whatever work is being done in the economy to be brought into the formal sector. So definitely uh, this coding of the labor laws. India's talented working age population is her biggest resource. India has prioritized upskilling around 400 million people to translate this talent into tangible growth for the country as a whole. Apart from the availability of highly skilled human resources at reasonable wages, an important factor responsible for drawing more investors to India is the Modi government's revolutionary reforms towards safeguarding investors' interests. India has improved by a remarkable 79 positions from 142nd in 2014 to 63rd in 2022 in terms of ease of doing business. Policies that encourage investment rather than exploit it have fared extremely well for the Indian market, as both domestic and foreign investors are confident about putting their money in the Indian market. And nowadays we see a huge potential in the Indian market. The India is really a, a very fast-growing country, full of opportunities. So I would say that uh, um, the, the country needs infrastructure, needs, uh, let's say, uh, innovation, and uh, most of this uh, you are able to do on your own with uh, very good companies, very good, uh, let's say, entities coming up every day in the Indian market. India has also emerged as one of the major economies that has adapted and is working on technological innovation. India is working overtime to make up for what was deemed a missing piece in the country's economic model, a robust infrastructure. From expressways to dedicated freight corridors to new ports, India's infrastructure improvement plan is textbook. India has already increased the capital outlay for infrastructure by 33% in the ongoing fiscal year. Observers say the cumulative efforts towards strengthening the Indian economy will pay off in times to come. India, which is close to having a 3.5 trillion USD economy, is projected to double that number in the next nine years. At a time when a precarious geopolitical climate coupled with an intensifying fuel war, disrupted supply chains, and looming inflation is taking a crippling toll on global growth, India has stood out as a single bright spot. Moving on. Sri Lankans marked the fourth anniversary of the Easter bombings this week. People carried out peaceful marches and urged every stakeholder in the counter-terrorism drive to make efforts to bring the real culprits to justice, which they said was still at large. Sri Lankan authorities have detained over 200 suspects so far, but details associated with the investigation are not accessible to the public. People are miffed as successive Sri Lankan governments have failed to keep their promises of providing all forms of security to the Sri Lankan people. A number of Sri Lankans gathered in capital Colombo to honour the victims of the deadly Easter bombings of 2019 in which over 260 Sri Lankans were killed. Preachers and followers also accused the successive Sri Lankan governments of not being assertive enough in pursuing the perpetrators of the blast. We have been doing this for the past Vijit Malalgoda Vimarshana Committee, Parliament to Terim Karak Sabhavaha, Janadipati Commission Sabhavayana Vimarshana 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 
asampur na ayurin ho. In the last four years, Sri Lankan police have arrested over 200 suspects in connection with the case and charged dozens of them. Police have, however, not made much information or evidence available to the public that goes beyond the terrorist group first recognized. A reckless intelligence failure on the part of the executive was cited by Sri Lanka's Supreme Court in January of this year when it ordered Maitri Pala Sri Sena, who was president in 2019, to pay compensation of about 2.2 crore rupees to terror attack victims. Prasiddheta Patkara Tibunat, Evae Gamya Vati, Atem Yojanaha Nirdesha Pilibadava, Janatava Hari Hati, Denuat Kiri Matavat, Pavati Ho Pavatina Rajayan, May Vanaturut Kriat Makavi Nette, E Pilibanda own at a Kisidu, Womanavak, Nometini Saho, Elidara Vi Haki Atemde, owned Prasnak Vi Haki Nisa Baba Pahadilia. In 2019, the former president Gota Baya Rajpaksa, who had been overthrown by a popular rebellion after the island's economic collapse the previous year, came to power on a platform of enhancing national security and prosecuting those responsible for the Easter assaults. Ranil Vikramasinghe, the current president of the island, had even promised that he would rope in Scotland Yard to speed up the investigation. However, nothing tangible on that front has been achieved thus far. <laughs> Yuktiya Sadar Nakte Venuin, Ape Cardinal Tuma, Lape Pujaka Pakshi, Silu Denam, Kadu to Kalaganianama, Eunat Kian Dukai, Adavanutura, Apita Yuktiya Sadar Nakya, Ishtavelara Nehe. During Easter Sunday bombings, media reports suggested intelligence lapses, including a lack of information sharing between the country's intelligence agencies the President and the Prime Minister. Experts believe that Colombo needs intelligence sharing with foreign partners to deal with challenges of this level and the government is required to step up its operations in this regard. There are many others who also believe if the government doesn't take stern actions timely, then the banned radical outfits may create a terror hub in the island nation which could have major implications for the southern Indian Ocean region. China has territorial disputes with more countries than it shares its borders with. The Chinese Communist Party, the CCP, with Xi Jinping at the helm, has used deceitful tactics and manipulation in order to attempt to assert territorial control over other sovereign territories. Beijing has flouted all international norms in its expansionist bid to control more territory. Join us as we explore how China's long-standing modus operandi of usurping other nations' territory has become even more sinister and calculated and why the world needs to intervene now more assertively than ever before. A strained Indo-Chinese relationship is witnessing a further plunge courtesy of China's repeated illegal and provocative campaigns to alter the status quo along the line of actual control, the de facto border between the two nuclear-armed countries. Comically, but equally concerning, China has now staked claims on parts of India's northeastern state of Arunachal Pradesh, arguing that these locations were part of Greater Tibet. A desperate Beijing unilaterally renamed as many as 11 Indian locations which included names of mountain peaks, rivers, and residential areas. This is not the first time that Beijing has employed such tactics. Previously, in 2017 and 2021, China's Civil Affair Ministry had renamed other Indian locations, triggering another political confrontation. New Delhi called out China's expansionist plans then, and New Delhi is calling out China's expansionist plans now. ये पहली बार नहीं है कि चाइना इस तरह के कोई अटेम्प्ट कर रहा है और हमने उसको खंडन किया था ऐसे अटेम्प्ट्स का 
आपने जिक्र किया है अरुणाचल प्रदेश के बारे में देखिए उसमें भी हमने कहा था कि अरुणाचल प्रदेश हमारे अभिन्न अंग है भारत का और ये जो अपने नाम लगाना या फिर अपने इन्वेंटेड नेम्स हमने जो कहा था उससे जो सिचुएशन है ग्राउंड में वो नहीं बदल सकता और रियलिटी नहीं बदल सकती है China is aggressively trying to increase its influence in the Indo-Pacific region, which is home to nearly 65% of the world's population. According to the Observer Research Foundation, ORF, China's rise as an economic and military powerhouse has resulted in a tectonic shift in the power balance. ORF research indicates that managing the rise of a tactfully aggressive China will be critical for the safety, security, and stability of the Indo-Pacific. And while the majority of the countries in the Indo-Pacific region are now facing territorial conflicts with China, they find India, Australia, and Japan as emerging power centers who can both challenge and check China's ambitious and expansionist plans. This region is under threat, which is China's domination. Uh, when uh, we compare Asia Pacific and Indo Pacific, uh, we can find one feature. Indo Pacific includes uh, all countries which have the problem uh, with China, especially the border problem. So that's why Indo Pacific is more easier to identify how to deal with China. Indeed, Quad is a group of the great powers in the Indo Pacific, except China. So that's why Indo-Pacific and Quad is one set. So uh, to deal with China, this concept is needed. China's expansionist agenda was established in 2013 by President Xi Jinping with the launch of the Belt and Road Initiative, BRI. To date, 147 countries have signed on to BRI projects or indicated an interest in doing so. However, many of these countries are now concerned that China is using BRI funds to gain influence and control, and that they are falling into a debt trap. Beijing's expansionism is not only a threat to its neighbors, but the entire Indo-Pacific region and other countries. India's efforts to contain China will not only benefit India and her citizens, but the broader Indo-Pacific region as well. Time now for Asia This Week, the stories from across the continent. Tens of thousands of Israelis demonstrated in Jerusalem this week to show support for controversial planned legislation by the far-right coalition, which would see the country's highest court stripped off much of its powers. Israelis remain polarized over the planned legislation that proponents say would restore balance to Israeli authorities and critics say remove checks on those in power. A sea of blue and white flags which have also been used as symbol of protest against the planned legislation could be seen outside Israel's parliament. Many demonstrators were wearing pins and holding flags supporting far-right Israeli political parties. Demonstrations against the judicial overhaul plans however, have gripped the country for weeks and have garnered large crowds in cities across the country, mostly and consecutively every Saturday night since the plans were announced. The Philippine Coast Guard released a footage showing its personnel being involved in confrontations with Chinese vessels in the South China Sea the latest in a string of tense maritime interactions between the two countries. The incidents occurred as the Coast Guard undertook a week-long patrol in the strategic waterway and as Chinese Foreign Minister King Gang visited the Philippines last weekend on an official visit. The Coast Guard said that during the April 18 to April 24 mission, it identified more than 100 alleged Chinese maritime militia vessels a People's Liberation Army Navy Corvette class and to China Coast Guard vessels within the Philippines' 200-mile exclusive economic zone. It added that one Chinese vessel carried out dangerous maneuvers at a distance of about 150 feet from a Philippine ship. Two other ships exhibited aggressive tactics, 
posing a significant threat to the safety and security of the Philippine vessel and its crew. As residents find ways to cope with Thailand's extreme heat over the past few weeks, the country recently recorded its highest ever heat index of 54 degrees Celsius, a measure of what the temperature feels like to human body. According to the Thai Meteorological Department, Thailand's actual temperature ranged between 38 to 42 degrees, with the highest heat index experienced in Bangkok's Bangna district, located in the eastern part of the capital. Thailand recently issued an extreme heat warning in Bangkok, warning people to be wary of the possibility of heat stroke due to the hot weather. The heat is expected to continue for the next seven days, according to the Thailand's weather agency. People in Indonesia's Papua gathered to observe a rare hybrid solar eclipse on April 20th. The total eclipse was only visible in East Indonesia, a part of Australia and Timor-Lese. A partial eclipse was also visible across all three countries and parts of Southeast Asia. In Jayapura, the capital of Papua province, where moon crossed the sun at 3.20 GMT, plunging viewers into darkness and dropping the temperature. This eclipse was a rare hybrid type, not seen worldwide since 2013. In a hybrid eclipse, depending on where the viewers stand, the moon either blots out the sun, a total eclipse, or obscures the center while leaving a ring of light visible, an annular eclipse. Local enthusiasts from around Indonesia came to Jaipura to witness the rare moment of hybrid solar eclipse. Muslims worldwide celebrated Eid al-Fitr and marked the end of Ramadan, the holy month of fasting. Beginning and ending with the new moon, Ramadan falls on the ninth month of the Arabic lunar calendar. Recently, the festival concluded amidst great festive fervor. Muslims across the world, a large section of whom observe fast and offer prayers every day during the holy month, welcomed the festival post the sighting of the crescent moon. These visuals are of daybreak when in the early morning devout Muslims offered prayers and marked the end of the holy month of Ramadan. Ramadan is the month of fasting from dawn to dusk. In this historical and symbolic monument known as Jama Masjid, Muslims perform the Salat al-Eid prayer, which means communion with God. Eid ul-Fitr is a time of celebration and people all over India enjoyed this year's festivity with prayers, food and gatherings. It is a special day for us because after 29 days, this day is our Eid for us. We have made a song for this day in our house, a song for this day, and we have made a song for this day. We celebrate this day in our house. All the people come to our house. और साथ साथ मैं बताना चाहूँगा इसके अंदर हम लोग गले मिलते हैं एक दूसरे से ईदी लेते हैं। इस्लामिक कंट्री पाकिस्तान सेलिब्रेटेड ईद विद ग्रेट पॉम्प। थाउजेंड्स ऑफ पीपल फ्रॉम द मार्केट्स ऑफ पाकिस्तान फॉर ईद उल फितर शॉपिंग। द होल मार्केट वाज डेकोरेटेड विद क्लोथ्स, शूज एंड ज्वेलरी। Imams lead Muslim worshippers on Eid and recite verses from Quran. People listen to him and follow his words. Everyone is happy because this is Eid's day, it's a two-year-old day. Because our religion is that in the two-year-old day, it's the only way to make Eid's day. We want to make Eid's day with the whole country. That the whole country will make Eid's day with the whole country. Every year, Muslims around the world anticipate the sighting of the new crescent moon that signifies the official first day of Ramadan, the ninth month of the Islamic calendar and the most sacred month in Islamic culture. During Ramadan, Muslims build a stronger relationship with the Almighty through fasting, selfless actions and prayers. Eid celebrations often include large feasts, gift giving and gatherings among family and friends. 
With that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care. People have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect.